Hi everyone, uh, this is your video lecture since we're unable to meet today. I wanted to talk to you guys about this story, Happy Endings. Uh, Happy Endings is a story by Margaret Atwood uh, that I customarily use at the beginning of a literature class. And you'll see why. As we get into it, it becomes not just about the story she's telling, uh, but it becomes about the idea of storytelling generally. So, uh, this story starts uh, by introducing you to characters. John and Mary meet. What happens next? If you want a happy ending, try A. Uh, so, this is almost like a choose-your-own-adventure story. Uh, if you guys are familiar with those, some of you may be more familiar with interactive stories like this because uh, uh, there's a, a television series on Netflix called uh, Black Mirror that recently did a choose-your-own-adventure episode. Uh, but this starts with this story. Story A talks about John and Mary, how they fall in love, how they have nice jobs and a good house. Uh, and they have uh, nice children, right? And then their children are good and everything about their life is great and they retire. And this is the end of the story. After they die, eventually they die. This is the end of the story. So uh, when you read this, you ask, what happens? Well, I guess everything happens. They have an entire life. But is this interesting? Is this what stories are about? There are no problems in this story. There's no conflict. Nothing actually happens in this story. Uh, nothing, at least, of interest. Uh, and, and you'll see what that tends to mean is nothing bad happens, right? It does say that eventually they die, but it doesn't seem surprising. They die after a nice long life. They die of natural causes. Uh, nothing too tragic. And because of that, there's not much interesting about this story. There's nothing that this story is really about. What would you say this story is about? Uh, a happy life, I guess. Uh, but that's not really what we look for when we tell stories or when we read stories. Uh, this is maybe a love story. It could be a love story. But don't love stories have to be about something other than the fact that people fell in love and had a nice life? If you think about any love stories that you have seen in right like a, a rom-com there are usually obstacles there are things that get in the way between uh, the people whether or not they fall in love they might be in love with other people or uh, things just don't work out between them uh, and and uh, and you wonder as you read the story or as you watch the movie whether or not they'll get together there's none of that here they just get married and have a nice life uh, there are no complications. There are no obstacles to what happens. And because of that, it is, uh, it is not a very strong story. I would say it's not a story. If I were to ask you, it's not a story that you are used to reading. Uh, but she gives you story B, in which Mary falls in love with John, but John doesn't fall in love with Mary. Uh, and they have this relationship in which he uses Mary, uh, and he is married. Actually, he is he is uh, he has a wife, and he doesn't seem to want to leave the wife. Right, uh, uh, and as the story B goes on, Mary gets depressed, and and she thinks that she might be able to change John, and that he'll leave his wife for her. Right, uh, and. She gets upset when he doesn't show her the affection or the regard that she shows for him, right? Uh, as story B goes on, she starts to plan suicide. She gets pills and uh, alcohol, but it doesn't seem like she's really wanting to commit suicide uh, because she drinks a bottle of sherry, which is kind of weak wine used for cooking. And she hopes, she hopes that she leaves a note for John and she hopes that he will stop her from committing suicide. He'll discover her, take her to the hospital, and they'll live happily ever after. But of course, that doesn't happen. And she dies. And then it says John marries Madge and everything continues as in A. So we have here uh, uh, the, the idea that uh, uh, John is going to continue, like in story A, and have a normal, nice life, live a long life that's happy, and nothing will go wrong. But the first part of the story, story B, is far more interesting. 
wouldn't you say this is a more interesting story? We have uh, people who one person feels strongly about the other, but the other person doesn't feel strongly about them. So you wonder, you, it, it, you, it creates what's called, um, what's called narrative tension, where you're wondering whether or not things will work out for the characters. Hopefully you sympathize with the characters and you wonder how things will turn out for them. And then we have something that's tragic that happens in the end. We have suicide. Uh, this this creates tension. This creates uh, a complications and conflict in the story. After that tragedy, though, it says, oh, it goes back to story A again. So what do you think that might mean? Could it mean that in real life, it's not like in the stories? In a story you read, there might be dramatic things happening and tragic things happening. But in real life, when someone dies, someone else goes on and lives a nice complete and full life that's challenging and uh, 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 fulfilling and they end up dying as well remember story a ended with the characters dying also so if you were reading this story would you keep reading after Mary committed suicide you were reading a story or watching a movie and you were you cared about the characters and then this character committed suicide then if the rest of the movie were about the guy getting married and having a nice happy and fulfilling life you would ask yourself what's the point of this it was interesting in the beginning when the character committed suicide and then the rest of it was just happy times what's the point of watching this story what's the point of watching this movie or reading this book so it would seem that the real end of the story is when Mary commits suicide that is when the conflict is resolved and so that's what stories need is they need conflict uh, to create narrative tension where you're wondering what's going to happen and once that's gone there is no story it's not interesting to watch someone have a good time it's not interesting to read a story where nothing bad happens and the characters are not challenged at all and the characters what get what they want and nothing stands in their way so what would you say this story is about story B you might say it's about love but it's about more than love it's also about dissatisfaction it's about depression it's about betrayal and you'll find that to have a strong story you need some some things you wouldn't want in real life in real life you don't want betrayal dissatisfaction depression death tragedy you don't want that but in stories you need it and it might turn out to be a happy ending at the end, but along the way you have to wonder if it's going to turn out in a bad way for the characters. And they go on to story C. Story C is different. Uh, John's an older man, falls in love with Mary, but Mary likes these younger guys and, and she doesn't really care about him. And he's, uh, he's kind of obsessed with Mary. Meanwhile, Mary is uh, uh, obsessed with this, this uh, bad boy who has a motorcycle, James, right? Well, what happens in this story? Uh, John is married to Madge. Maybe maybe he had married Madge in story B, and you can s sort of see that all of these stories are connected, right? They have two children, right? And uh, this nice, uh, like in story A, they have this nice house, uh, this nice life. But uh, he can't leave his wife because a commitment is a commitment. Uh, so he, <clears throat> he goes on uh, more, more than is necessary about this. Mary finds it boring. Uh, she's more interested in that younger man uh, and uh, you know she's with this younger man when when John or uh, John shows up and and what does he do he, he is driven crazy by the fact that this young woman he's having an affair with actually is in bed with another man and he kills them and then he kills himself but then Madge who he was married to goes and finds another man named Fred and everything continues as in A, but under different names. So, the writer seems to be saying something here. First, uh, you might ask yourself, if this, is this story better or worse? Well, it depends on your personal tastes. It's definitely different than story B, but why is it different? Yeah, different things happen, but it's more than that. It's different because the characters in it are different. They have the same name, but they are different characters. So characterization is important in stories. Uh, why the characters do what they do changes the story. What is this story about? Yeah, maybe it's about love again, but it's about other things. There are, um, there are complications and obstacles, but they're different here. It's about marital, marital obligations. 
It's about uh, being infatuated with a bad boy, right? It's about uh, uh, romance with age difference. It's about betrayal again. But it's also about rage and about revenge. Maybe you find this story more interesting than the last one. But what Margaret Atwood seems to be saying is, while this is an interesting story, in real life, beyond this story, what would happen? Well, the person who's left behind gets married again, and she has a nice life. But that's not part of the story. That would happen after the story ends because you wouldn't be interested in that. So what you're going to find throughout this semester is that a lot of the stories seem terrible. They seem like awful things happen. But that's because for a story to be meaningful, there need to be obstacles and complications and bad things that, that happen to the characters in order for them to try to overcome those bad things and, and accomplish their goals or fail to accomplish their goals. And you, as the reader will care whether or not they get what they want, and you will care uh, about what is happening to them. That's what makes a story successful. And she brings up other kinds of stories. Story D, uh, Fred and Madge, they have no problems. Uh, but then there's a natural disaster. Well, that's a different kind of story, right? Uh, <clears throat> then you have story E, where someone dies, uh, and it's a, it's a tragic story. Fred has a bad heart, right? Uh, and eventually he dies. But then what happens? Uh, Madge devotes herself to charity work until the end of A, and she has a nice life. And Mer Atwood seems to be saying it doesn't matter what the details are. You can change the names. You can change it from uh, a bad heart to cancer. You can change it from uh, w someone feeling kind and understanding to feeling guilty and confused. You can change the fact that Madge devotes herself to charity work, and now it's bird watching. Sometimes... The details of the story don't matter, she's saying, but the fact that there is complication, there is something happening to the characters, that does matter. And then she says what happens, uh, so what's, what's happening in story D, these, these are more or less uneventful stories, right? Um, I'll skip through these parts there about slow death. Uh, but uh, she says uh, it could be something else. It could be about war. It could be about politics, revolutionaries, and counter-espionage agents. And it might be a, brus a, a lustful, brawling saga. But in the end, you know, she says uh, it, it, it could be a chronicle of our times, sort of, right? But you'll still end up with story A, she says. In the end... People just live their lives. In real life, people just live their lives for several years, and then they die. So, I'm going to skip through some of these. Uh, she says, you'll have to face it. The endings are the same, however you slice it. Don't be deluded by any other endings. They're all fake. So, how did these all end? They all ended in death. The only authentic ending is the one provided here. They die. John and Mary die. Uh, she says, so much for endings, beginnings are always more fun. True connoisseurs, however, are known to favor the stretch in between, since it's the hardest to do anything with. That's about all that can be said for plots, which anyway are just one thing after another, a what, a what, and a what. Now try how and why. So when we get to the end of this story, we realize she's not talking so much about stories and storytelling. We learned something about stories. We learned something about storytelling from this because she's talking about the idea uh, of what stories need, what goes into a story, what makes a story interesting. But along the way, she starts talking about real life. She's saying, really, the only ending to anyone's story, in, in real life or in fiction, is that they die. And she says, uh, endings aren't the interesting part. The fact that someone dies isn't interesting, because it happens to everyone. She's suggesting that what happens before that is the most interesting part. She says, a plot, which is just the actions, the events in a story, is not as interesting about as how and why things happen. And that's what you're doing when you are, uh, when you are, when you are analyzing literature. You are trying to figure out the how and the why not just what happens in the story you're not just trying to analyze what happens you're trying to analyze why how the writer uh, gets gets their point across what techniques they you've used and eventually you're going to talk about why what is the writer's point point? 
So see, these are th- some of the things that come up in uh, in literature um, when when you're studying literature. Uh, and it's something that I want you to be thinking about. That's why I usually start with this reading in the beginning of a semester. <laughs> 